بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته How you guys doing? Ahmed Hamouda here once again and Ramadan is over What do we do? You know, what can I do? Do I stop praying? Do I stop worshiping? What is all this? Inshallah we're going to talk about today uh, keeping yourself a good Muslim even though Ramadan finished So I just want to bring to your attention Don't think that خلاص, Ramadan is over, that's it I can go back to my old self I don't have to pray anymore, fast anymore خلاص, I'll just wait until next Ramadan No, of course, this is not what you want and This is not what you should be doing And you should not even be having this intention in the first place Inshallah, you should even want to become a better Muslim outside of Ramadan Because if you were to look at the purpose of Ramadan and what it's really for is to give you a confidence booster, to give you a motivation uh, to be a good Muslim throughout the year. That's what Ramadan is, it's that catapult, something to you know give you that jump start onto life so that you become a good Muslim uh, throughout the entire year. Because if you were to think about it, if I'm doing something for 30 consecutive days or 29 consecutive days, then of course I mean, this should be easy for me to make this a habit and I start doing it for the rest of my life. And inshallah, this is what Ramadan is supposed to be for. Like I said before, brothers and sisters, Ramadan, yani of course, it's a beautiful, holy, great month. But at the end of the day, it's just a month. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, is al-hay and al-samad, meaning that he is the ever-living and the eternal. Meaning that just because Ramadan is over, doesn't mean Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stops judging me and stops wanting me to worship and all these other things. You know, this is something that we should be doing our entire lives. Not just in the month of Ramadan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator and he is the one that's going to judge us. So inshallah, like I said, this video is going to give you some few tips and some motivation on becoming a good Muslim throughout the year and not just in the month of Ramadan. So firstly, you know, a lot of people have the question or they have the mindset that in Ramadan, I don't know, man, my heart is at peace and I'm a good person and I feel so good and relaxed. But once Ramadan finishes, I feel you know depressed and sad and not wanting to do any worship acts or anything like that. So why? Why is this? And how can we you know help uh, overcome this? So firstly, let's explain why in the month of Ramadan you were at this uh, situation. You were at this ease of heart. Well, we go to the Quran where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Ala bi dhikrillahi tatuma'inna al-qulub." Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that unquestionably with the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find the ease. So why were you at such peace and such ease and such relaxation and so feeling so good? It's because you were in you were absorbed and embedded in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were in the masjid, you were praying, you were fasting, you were reading and listening to Quran, you were praying tarawih. You know, of course you're gonna be feel good. You know, you were absorbed by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All you did throughout your day was, you know, worship. And then you come outside of Ramadan and let's look what happens. And remember the verse I just quoted and one of the key things that was said was, you know, dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how that same word is going to be uh, addressed in another verse that I'm going to bring, which is in Surah Al-Taha, which talks about the opposite. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And the one who turns away from my remembrance For them they will have a depressed life So now we know why we have, we're depressed and sad after Ramadan It's because everything that I was doing in Ramadan The prayer, the fasting, the Quran, the me going to the masjid and all these things I stopped doing it after Ramadan So naturally of course going by this verse in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Because you turned away from his remembrance this is why you have a depressed life. So how can you not be depressed after the month of Ramadan, guys? It's very easy. Just do some, if not all the things that you did in Ramadan, do it throughout your life. And you won't have a depressed life. You'll be of the same condition or a similar condition outside Ramadan as this, as well as inside Ramadan. Go to the masjid, read Quran, uh, pray, continue praying, doing all these things. Of course, you're gonna have a good life if you stay in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one of the reasons why uh, in Ramadan we feel so great and so happy and so all these things, but outside of Ramadan we don't. Now brothers and sisters, you guys know that in the month of Ramadan, you guys went crazy with the Quran. You guys were listening and reading and pondering and analyzing the Quran like never before. 
you guys went, mashallah, very good. So my question to you is, why stop now? You know, you went 30 days of taking the Qur'an seriously. Why stop? You know, maybe throughout the year you can't do as much as you did in Ramadan, but that doesn't mean you abandon the Qur'an completely until next Ramadan. So what you should do is even if it's 15, half an hour, an hour a day, dedicate your time to either listening, reading, maybe listening to a, a, a lecture about what the ayahs mean. So try to change it up for yourself. Just dedicate half an hour a day. You know, today I'm going to listen. Today I'm going to read. Today I'm going to see what they actually mean. So, you know, change it up every single day what you're going to do with the Quran. Or even if it's not every day, at least twice a week or three times a week. You know, you, you, you're in charge of your schedule. So you put down days and hours and time that you can fit in the Quran in your life because you've seen how beneficial and how attached you were in the month of Ramadan. So there's no reason for you to, you know, pack your bags, put your Quran on your shelf and let it collect dust. No, the Quran is for ourselves, not our shelves. So let's take uh, heed of this and implement this in our daily lives, even though Ramadan finished. Guys, um, I have some breaking news. I don't think anyone knew this before. So let me mention it to you guys now because you probably don't know. The masjid is not closed after Ramadan. It's open every single day. So why do we, you know, vanish from the... Let me get serious real quick. Uh, you know, it's very, very strange how in the month of Ramadan, the masjid will be absolutely packed. And then the next day, I'm talking about even on the day of Eid, when Dhuhr or Asr or Maghrib or Isha comes, 90% of the people who used to come and pray vanish until next Ramadan. Why? You know, even if it's not every day like we were in Ramadan visiting the masjid and going to the masjid, you know, at least, at least, at least once or twice a week, let's visit the masjid, pray there, maybe sit there, listen to a lecture, do something. Even if we're just going there, praying and sitting down for half an hour and leaving, this is also good. Why should we abandon visiting the masjid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, it's a place that's very holy, a place that we love going and we feel at peace going there. So at least, you know, put in our schedules, you know what, I have to visit and go to the masajid more often. Now, something that I really, really want to stress on you guys is that, alhamdulillah, you guys this year did very, 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 very good in terms of your Ramadan and you guys took advantage and you guys did what you guys needed to do this month. However, now, since you guys are bettering yourselves and becoming better people in terms of your religion, in terms of your faith, there's just one key advice that I want to give you guys to make sure that you guys are consistent in your worship and consistent in what you're doing. One thing that you guys really, really have to remember is guys, take your time. Don't tire yourself and try to do too much, too fast. You know, at the end of the day, if you're if you're at this, uh, you know, just adding so much and you're stressing yourself and doing too much too fast, then you're gonna tire yourself out. And then, you know, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for this not to happen to you, but then you're gonna, you know, get tired and get lazy and just quit. So my advice to you is take it step by step. Don't just jump, a, you know, to a whole new world and start doing all these things that you're not accustomed to because you're you are gonna get tired and you are gonna get uh, lazy in this. It's like the person who's running a marathon. You have person A, you have person B. You know, a marathon is 26 miles, right? 26 and some change. Um, so you have the rider A, who as soon as the race starts, he starts sprinting his absolute max he's going he's out 25 26 miles an hour then you have person b who the race starts and you know what he's jogging he's taking his time he's just you know pacing it out so when mile five comes you know not even half even close to halfway of the race comes person a who was you know sprinting and going super fast he's getting tired now he's slowing down he's you know he's take he's about to pass out then you have person b who we know he still has energy, he's still jogging, he's still doing good. Then what happens to person A? He f drops, he can't go anymore, and he didn't finish the race. Then you have person B who took his time, you know, going faster as the race goes on and trying to, you know, doing all these things, he finishes the race. Now let's implement this onto us and what I'm doing now. Now if Ramadan finishes, and I'm just trying to do so much with myself that I have never did before, then most likely you are gonna fail before, you know, even the next Ramadan comes. You're not gonna be consistent in what you're doing. It's just logical. 
But if you're taking things step by step and taking your time and adding and perfecting each thing you're doing, then you're going to have a solid, strong base and you're going to build and build and build and build with no problem. So when next Ramadan comes, you're even going to be an even better Muslim than you were before. So this is something that you really have to think about and really do. Because to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter if you, you know, you were the best Muslim and you were doing everything that you did, but you only lasted one week. But if you were someone who, you know, they took their time, they were taking things step by step, every week they would add something or every month they would add something and they would, you know, really perfecting and trying their best to do, then you are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why am I saying this? Because the Prophet peace be upon him says this. He says in the authentic hadith that the deed most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or dearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that's done consistently even if it's small. So be consistent rather than you know just doing as much as you can and then quitting after a week. So please, please guys, you know I'm, I, I understand that you guys are good people now and you guys want to become better Muslims every single day but just please take your time and perfect the things you're doing now and add one by one rather than just loading your plate up and biting too much than you can chew so this is something that you guys can remember and inshallah you guys can be great muslims in and out of ramadan and i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this ramadan from you and inshallah um, you guys can be from the best of muslims in this world now guys just because ramadan finished doesn't mean that we can't fast anymore no we can fast the optional days throughout the year that will help us get a lot of good deeds and even some other things that will benefit us a lot um, now there is a lot of days where you can fast however I'm just gonna mention three days for this year that you guys can do and inshallah in next year's video about when Ramadan finishes we can talk about the other days you can fast however this year you should take these three optional days and fast them because their reward and the things you can gain from them are very very great so the first one we talk about is I talked about in my previous video, the one where we were talking about Ramadan, how we get the most rewards out of. I'm gonna repeat it again today. Uh, the Prophet peace be upon him says in the authentic hadith in Riyadh al-Salihin that the one who fasts the month of Ramadan and then fasts the six days of Shawwal, then it is as if he has fasted the entire year. So what does the Prophet peace be upon him mean by this? That the one who fasts all the days of Ramadan then fast the six days of Shawwal. What is Shawwal? It's the month that we are currently in. The same way Ramadan is a month, Shawwal is a month as well, which comes right after Ramadan. So now you have six days in this 30 or 29 day month to fast six days. And these six days don't have to be consecutive. You know, in Ramadan we fasted 30 straight days. These days don't have to be straight. I could fast one here, then two, and then one here, and then one there. As long as I fit in six within this month, then I will be rewarded as if I have fasted the entire year. Something that we cannot even begin to imagine how you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanAllah, He rewards us for us doing something very, very small. So this, uh, this is the first uh, day that you should fast, or the first uh, group of days you should fast, is in the month of Shawwal, where you have to soon, uh, fast six days out of the month, and no, these days do not have to be consecutive. Now the next two days, we know about them from the same hadith. In Sahih Muslim, the Prophet peace be upon him tells us about two days that we should fast optional, that you know the reward for it is great. The first, the Prophet peace be upon him says, and I'm gonna explain these hadiths after I'm finishing to the to the, the absolute max so that you can understand exactly what you have to do and when do you have to do it. So the first day that the Prophet peace be upon him mentions in this hadith is the day of Arafah. And the Prophet peace be upon him says, the one who fasts on that day, it uh, will he will be forgiven for the last year's bad deeds and the coming year's bad deeds. And then the next day he mentions in the same hadith, the Prophet peace be upon him says, the one who fast Ashura, he will be forgiven for last year's bad deeds. So what I just mentioned two days and a couple terms that you know maybe not a lot of you understand, what do they mean and what do I have to do and when are they? Inshallah we're gonna explain. So the first one in the hadith we mentioned is the day of Arafah. What is the day of Arafah? It's the ninth day in the month of Dhul Hijjah. A way you can remember like when exactly this is, is when people go to Hajj. This is the month that they go to Hajj. So the ninth day of this month is the Yom of Arafah, the day of Arafah. And if we fast that day, like I said before, you will be forgiven for the bad deeds you did last year and the bad deeds that you're gonna do in the next year. But of course, once again, 
you have to have the right intention when you're going into fast these days. Then the second day that the Prophet peace be upon him mentions, the day of Ashura. What is this? The day of Ashura is the tenth day in the month of Muharram. And if you fast this day, the Prophet peace be upon him says, last year's bad deeds will be forgiven for you. So two days, once again in this hadith, one in Dhul uh, Hijjah, one in Muharram, uh, that you can fast that will forgive you your bad deeds you know we all make mistakes and this is an avenue or this is a way that we can get forgiven for those bad deeds so I mentioned three days or three groups of days that you can fast just this year of course there are many more however we'll mention that later on but for this year you should put this down in your in your books I'm fasting the six days of Shawwal the day of Arafah and the day of Ashura Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you guys for watching like I said before, these are just a few tips that I wanted to mention so that you guys can implement it throughout your lives after Ramadan. Once again, if you found this video benefiting or you liked it or you want to learn more about Islam, subscribe to the channel so that you guys can be notified about my newer videos and so you guys can be uh, watching my older videos which teaches you about Islam and teaches you about important concepts and even if you, you know maybe you're feeling down one day and you don't, you know, not as energetic or as enthusiastic about your religion, it can inshallah give you a confidence boost and give you a reality check sometimes as well. Thank you guys for watching and inshallah I see you guys soon.